Right, uh, today I'm going to make a preview videos which is implicit differentiation. So in this video, I try to make the implicit differentiation as simple as possible. So over here, I'm going to give you a few examples. Okay, so let's start with the very first example. So let's say we have an equation like x squared plus y squared equals to 4. So if I want to differentiate this uh, equation, uh, basically, it's, it's, it's very, very similar to the normal differentiation. But the problem is, when we differentiate, we will do something like d over dx. This is what we call, we differentiate respect to x. This is what we call, we differentiate. And then, uh, right, respect to x. But the problem is, in this equation over here, you will see a y here. So now, the question is, what happens when I differentiate y squared? Right, so this one is very very similar to you differentiate x squared. So imagine if you differentiate x squared, what will you get? If because this is our uh, d dx, right? So you so you basically you will get two x here. So when you differentiate y squared, uh, actually it's very similar. So you basically you just assume this is x, then you will actually get two x, isn't it? So over here I will get two y. But you need to add one more step is whenever you see y, which is not x, you always need to add a dy dx at the back. Okay, this is kind of the rule of it. So therefore, if today I differentiate cos y, imagine if I differentiate cos y, you just imagine it is, it is very similar with your differentiate cos x. You actually get negative sine x, isn't it? So therefore, over here you should get negative sine y and then you add a dy dx. So same idea if today you differentiate ln y. So it's the same idea with you differentiate ln x. You differentiate ln x give you 1 over x, right? So this one will give you 1 over y. And then you just add a dy dx for it. Okay, so this is how we do the implicit differentiation. So let's come back to these questions. So normally when I say differentiate, right, it basically is mean it differentiate every single one. So that that's mean I add the differentiation uh differentiation signs for every single one. So you have a four here, you have a y square here, and then you have x square here. Alright, that's mean differential x square, y square and four. Differential x square is two x, very simple. And y square like what I say just now, this one basically will give you two y dy dx. Alright, and you differentiate 4, basically give you 0. So, if I want to find dy dx, basically it's mean, I will make my dy dx as a subject. So, therefore, this one should be dy dx to y here, will equal to negative 2x. I just move the 2x to the other side, it's negative 2x. So, my dy dx is negative 2x over 2y. So, therefore, if I simplify, I can call negative x over y. So, this is my results of uh, dy dx. Right, so I try to uh, bring in more complicated example to make you understand better about this part. Let's say today I have y equals to uh, x e power of y. Right, so give you some idea first. So today if I differentiate e x, I'm getting back the e x. So what happens when I differentiate e y? So I say just now, you get back e y, but you add a dy dx at the back. Alright, so this is what happens, and you realize this is x multiply ey, so basically, you should know this is product rule. Right, so product rule basically quite simple, just copy u, differentiate v, plus you copy v, differentiate u, isn't it? Alright, so this is product rule, I hope you know how to do. So, so if I differentiate both sides, mean I d dx for both sides, so the first one, if I differentiate y, it just give me dy dx. Alright, so you just imagine if I differentiate y, you just get me dy dx. Alright, so or you're trying to apply the rule just now, you can imagine if I differentiate y, I actually get 1, right? And then I add a dy dx. So it's still getting back the dy dx. Okay, so and then here I'm going to do the product rule. So I will copy the x and then differentiate ey. So it, give, well, it will give me ey and then I will write dy dx at the back. And then I have plus, I copy the v, which is e power y, I differentiate x, it will give me 1. 
Right, so over here, if I want to find dy dx, basically I need to make the dy dx as a subject. So you need to do something similar to algebra. So I'm going to move around. I'm going to move the whole thing here to the other side. So my dy dx will minus x ey dy dx, which I move the whole thing uh, to my left hand side, will equals to ey. So, and then I will factorize out my dy dx. So you just imagine if I take dy dx out, what do I left here? If I factorize out, I left a 1 here, isn't it? So I have 1 minus the rest of the thing, which is x ey. Okay, so I close the bracket, equals to ey. So therefore, my dy dx should equals to ey over 1 minus x e power of y. Right, so this part actually is not very hard, but then the idea is, first thing you should know, this is product rule. Yeah, sometimes you need to use product rule, question rule, or change rule. Right, so after you do that already, you realize you got you have more than one side, you have more than one dy dx. So the, another idea is basically when you have more than one, you have to factorize out them and then make dy dx as a subject. So basically quite simple. So I will end this video by giving you the last example. Uh, basically it's quite easy as well, but it's slightly more complicated. So let's say I have... Uh, x equals uh, y equals to maybe x sine x so if i have an example like this uh first thing is is you realize sine x actually is on the power so when we in differentiation topics we want to take out anything power we will trying to use ln we're trying to use ln we will avoid the lg because yeah we, we don't learn how to differentiate lg even you have lg you also need to change the ln right so over here, what I will do here is I will add the ln for both sides. Alright, the good thing about adding log for both sides is log, log rule tells us that we can bring the power to the front to become multiplied, isn't it? So this one will be ln y equals to the sine x. And then this one will be ln x. Alright, so I just move the sine x to the, to the front and then, then only I start to do, do this. Alright, then I will differentiate both sides. So we differentiate here and I will differentiate here. All right, and you should know this is multiply, sine x multiply ln x. So you should know this is u and v. So I have a product rule here. All right, like what I say just now for this part, if I differentiate ln y, basically I will get one over y and I have a dy dx because this is not ln x, all right? So I have a dy dx at the back here. Okay, over here I'm gonna do the product rule. Product rule basically copy u, differentiate v, plus copy v, differentiate u. Right, just remember this rule is very simple. So if I copy u, it will be sine x, yeah, and I differentiate v, I will get 1 over x. Plus, if I copy v, which is ln x, and I differentiate u, which, which, will, give, which will give me cos x. There's no y over this side, so it should be quite easy. So if I want to find a dy dx, I basically, I just move my y to the other side so I should have the y multiply this one should be sine x over x plus mm, okay normally I prefer write my cos x at the front and then ln x alright this is my answer for the dy dx alright so in next video maybe I will bring up more about the preview syllabus anyways after you watching this video if you find any part you do not really understand yeah please post the comment below I'm trying to answer your questions as soon as possible. Anyways, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next video.